Wurlitzer organ known as Opus 1482, which left the factory in America in October 1926 to be installed in what is now the Embassy Theatre in Wellington. The dismantled organ commences its journey to Tokoroa via Taupo. Its first temporary installation was in a honey packing shed at Amersfield near Tokoroa. It was used in concert several times at this location. The organ was transferred to the Tokoro High School where it was installed in the assembly hall. The former owner is playing his final closing chord. He sinks the organ into its pit and closes down the blower. As soon as the blower is stopped, the crew of volunteers will swing into action in the removal process. The keys are handed over to the crew on behalf of the Tauranga City Council. The first item to be dismantled is the set of cathedral chimes, which are assembled ready for dispatch. The pedal board is carefully removed from the console. The contents of the solo chamber are next to be packed. This includes the manual chest and the pressure regulators. The heart of the organ, the relay and stop switches are next to go. Some interesting from past Tokoro concerts were unearthed. It's a case of dust of ages cleft for me. The truck is already being loaded, the console goes on first, and a good deal of attention is given to protecting the console from damage in transit with packaging material. Next loaded is the blower, one of the heaviest items to be transported. The truck is loaded with the heaviest items, the load is secured and the truck departs for Tauranga. It is low gear work for the truck as it crosses the Kaimai range. At last the truck arrives at the Tauranga Town Hall. Although the organ was stored in various locations, its ultimate installation was to be in the Town Hall.
Other modes of transport were used. Vulnerable items were transported in a crew member's caravan to be stored at the youth centre. No bread, while the bread van was pressed into service for transporting organ pipes from Tokoroa. The unloading of some of the interesting components of the toy counter, such as the snare drum, horses' hooves, castanets, sleigh bells and other sound effects, attracted a good deal of attention from interested spectators. Meanwhile, back at the town hall, work is proceeding on the excavation of the console pit. A suitably sound insulated enclosure had to be built below stage for the blower. This was so that the noise of the blower could not be heard in the auditorium. As the work progressed, more of the stored material were transferred from the youth center to the town hall. This was the first opportunity for the crew to make a close study of the console keys and multicolored stop tabs which select the various pipe ranks and sound effects. With the pipe chambers completed, but before the expression shutters are in place, all of the major items are manhandled through the shutter opening into the chambers. Meanwhile, the rotating console platform is being prepared for the console, and at the same time, the loading of pipes into their various chests proceeds. The console pit is ready and the hatch cover is being tested. Final touches by the spray painter to the console before it is put in place on its platform. The rotating platform is ready to take the console and a member of the crew is taken for an, an impromptu spin. At last, the console is placed in position on the platform. With the console on the turntable, 
it is tested for clearances and comfort by a future organist. The hoist and rotating mechanisms are tested by one of the crew. At the same time, the relay chest is connected to the console, keys and pedals. The stop tabs are tested to ensure that all of the rank switches respond to all commands. The piano has been refurbished, connected and tested, closely followed by the testing of the chrysoglot. With all chamber contents in place, the shutters can be mounted and tested. Some delicate adjustments are made to the chest magnets at this stage. The piano is ready and the shutters are given a final paint touch-up. Electrical circuits are given their final check. The tuned sleigh bells are also ready for action. A heater is installed for temperature control. The pipes are now all in their positions on the chest and tuned. The toy counter is ready. At last the big day has arrived. It is the 16th of September, a Sunday afternoon. The opening concert is about to start and the first of the audience are arriving. Our featured opening organist, Anne Holmes of Auckland, enters the auditorium. His Worship, the Mayor of Tauranga, Bob and Mrs. Owens arrive for the opening ceremony. Anne Holmes opens the concert with a rousing number. There is a postscript to this story. The commentary is by Rex White, who was also instrumental in bringing the organ to Tauranga. In 1971, on learning of the possibility that the Wurlitzer would be sold, Rex approached the mayor, Mr. Owens, with the idea that it would be good for Tauranga 
if it could be established there. Mr Owens approached the 20,000 Club, which readily agreed to finance the bid, which was successful. Rex had undertaken to lead the crew to relocate the organ. He was assisted with a large team of volunteers who are too numerous to acknowledge individually, although this was done in the opening program. A true community effort, and this is an acknowledgement of their contribution. This film was produced in 1972 by the Tauranga New Zealand Movie Club. Sound was by Ron Gordon, camera work by John McGarrigal. All music was actually performed on Opus 1482. This film follows on from Opus 1482 Part 1, which covers the transfer of the Wurlitzer organ from Tokoroa to the Tauranga Town Hall in the year 1971. For 18 years the Wurlitzer remained in the Town Hall. Its new home was to be the Bay Court Theatre Complex and this film covers the major undertaking of relocation in this venue. There was a degree of urgency to move the organ to secure storage at short notice. The demolition machines were ready to start and the Wurlitzer removal crew made an immediate start. All this resulted from a decision in late 1980 by the City Council to demolish the Town Hall and replace it with a shopping and library complex. This Council decision was not universally accepted by the public nor by the Maori people. The Town Hall and Bay Court were on adjoining land and because of the short distance between them, many parts of the organ were able to be moved by hand. The removal of the blower was a particularly difficult operation. Its new position in Bay Court were several floors above the loading bay and the blower was hoisted to this level with a winch. The massive shutters followed shortly after. Another heavy and awkward item was the piano. This was able to be moved on a trolley with a fair amount of manpower. Other minor parts were being transferred progressively. Meantime, the relay room was being prepared to receive the relay and rank switch stack. The first step was to set holding bolts in the ceiling to support the cable trays.
As a result of all the organ shifts, the original 1926 cabling of the organ was starting to show its age. Being made of cotton-covered wire, it was decided to abandon the old cable and recable with, with modern plastic insulated cable. Although Baycourt was not designed to have an organ, fortuitously it was possible to construct organ chambers with little alteration to the building. With the chambers completed, the pipes were able to be placed in their ranks. Various wall-mounted traps, such as the tuned sleigh bell, could now be placed in position. The toy counter was installed in the main chamber. As an innovation, the sides of the chambers facing the auditorium were finished in double glazed glass covered with sliding curtains. This was so that during organ concerts, the audience could see into the chambers, particularly to expose parts that move. The relay chests are prepared to take the new plastic cables, which are carefully threaded into position. New power cables were terminated in brazed connecting lugs. The provision of space to enable the console to rise from below floor was a major hurdle. Floor sections had to be removed as well as the concrete slab below the auditorium floor. The most practical method of removing floor sections was with the use of a chainsaw. Meanwhile, the ladies of the organ societies were proceeding with the running of cables. The concrete cutter has finished his job and further excavation can proceed. A mechanical excavator is moved onto stage with suitable reinforcement to bear its weight.
concrete was now laid for the floor of the new console pit. A reinforced concrete block wall is now placed to restrain the pressure of the surrounding subsoil. Some young organ buffs supervise the progress. The steel frame for the hoist mechanism has been prefabricated and is, is being assembled and welded on site. The hoist lead screws are ready for installation. While the assembly proceeds, more organ pipes are being placed in their appropriate position in the chests. The wind is on and it's earmuffs from now on. Meanwhile, back at the hoist, the rotating mechanism has given its first check. One of the crew is taken for a ride. The vertical movement is controlled by four lead screws, all driven by a single chain drive. Various pulley sizes are tested to attain an acceptable vertical speed. With the hoist completed, the platform is ready to receive the console. It was necessary for the console to be placed so that the load on the turntable is evenly distributed. The console is now in place and first cables are threaded into position for terminating. Because the cable hangs in a loop below the console to allow for rise and fall, special flexible cable is used here. Final adjustments are made to the magnets from the restricted space between the pipe chests and the regulators not the most comfortable of working positions. Because the working position is so awkward, every fault encountered is dealt with from a prone position. Here, a pneumatic bellows is re-leathered re and replaced in position. 
Because organists come in all shapes and sizes and weights, the rotating mechanism must be capable of handling extra load. This is checked by several of the crew on board. City Council officials pay a visit to the job to check on progress. At this time, we are ready to check that all cable connections are correct. Because such care was taken in the running of cables, no faults are found. As the project nears completion, many small finishing jobs are being attended to. The wind is on and the tremulants are running. 